Hi, friends, and welcome back to The Sesh. I'm Kendall. And I'm Janelle. And boy, do we have something exciting to tell you guys That's today. Right. We made merch. Yes. Finally. Well, I know. <laughs> it took forever. It took almost literally two years since starting the show. Can you believe it's almost been two years since we started this shit? That's embarrassing. Okay, we wow. have uh, to oh, our credit. Oh, embarrassing. Have, kind I thought you meant, of. I thought you were embarrassing about the show. I was like, oh. No, it's great. Very proud of that. (laughs) Very proud of that. Embarrassing that we've been talking about merch since like day one. No, literally. It's been two years. It's been two years, people. But But it's here. (laughs) Took us long enough. To our credit, we didn't start actually working on Sesh merch. (laughs) Sesh (laughs) merch. Till about a few months ago. Yeah. Well, Um, we weren't going to like dive in. I mean, merch is a big commitment, obviously. And we didn't know how well this show would do. We needed the time to really... You know, figure out the vibes. What is the sesh? What is the sesh really? But anyways, we have five different pieces here Mm -hmm. that we are so fucking excited about. We think it turned out so good. Yes. So Kendall and I are wearing Mm -hmm. two different ones, which Curly will put um, pictures up on the screen as well. Yep. But one of them is a t-shirt that says, keep it fresh over and over again. We like to call this the grocery store shirt. Yeah. No, the Mm -hmm. uh, satisfaction guaranteed. Freshness guaranteed. Oh, get right. Freshness guaranteed. <laughs> oh, yeah. we, we worked going. really hard on the names for each item. Yeah, the names are funny. You'll have to go on the site and look at all the names. Yep. Um, yep. I love this one. I know, me too. I think this one so might even cute. be my favorite. It's so cute, dude. I love how... And it says Sesh at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's all like rainbowy, And these are really good quality too. Yep. Like actually, they don't feel like some janky youtuber merch <laughs> like they're really they like feel like good clothes that you would buy yeah at a store well we've been very hands-on with it sydney she's not here right now yeah. but she worked really, really hard on hard. all these yeah and um we're shipping this out ourselves mm-hmm. and you know it's a full team project yeah we really wanted to have our hands in the merch a lot more because yeah. in the past we've used like other companies and stuff parties, and, yeah yeah so we it's a lot more hands-on for us now and it's been we're cool. really proud of how it turned out to work with designers and like we get mock-ups and we like oh let's change this let's mm-hmm. see what this looks like on this shirt and it takes longer than you would think honestly yeah because at first i was like okay let's make some sesh no this shit <laughs> yeah. i mean granted it was for two other shows as well or yes. and your channel but mm-hmm. still mm-hmm. it was it's a lot of work okay anyways show off your shirt what do yes. we have here we've got the spicy shirt we here. had to do it spicy mm-hmm so cute the little chili so pepper so good so this one is a very lightweight crew neck neck. Mm -hmm. so it's good for summer you know sometimes summer nights a little chilly Chilly, yeah for sure um i like crew necks all year round so me too i love how this one turned out it's so cute a lot of back and forth on this one trying to get it right trying to get the pepper the right colors Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yep and it turned out great the back is super cute too yeah we'll put a picture up of the back it's so cute we had to do a spicy of course Something. of course we needed spicy so. merch and there'll probably be more spicy merch in the future this isn't it for the spicy. oh hell no in fact we've already got our minds going for the next oh yeah pickle the merch next people i just had an idea pickle passion what's uh, up spicy pickles Sp- oh oh Ooh, shit. that could Brill. be good then one of my favorite pieces we have yes oh so cute mm, it's such a vibe it's such a vibe look at this yes you can see it better in the side cameras but it has a little smiley face and little mushrooms and leaves growing out the front of it. Mm-hmm. And then the back, you guys. Oh. Is so cool. See, this might be tied for me I for know, second this might favorite. Be my favorite. But I, I also love the spicy. I don't I know. know. It's really too. hard. This one is so good, though. Look at that. It's so cute. The, the colors smiley are so face. vibrant. The butterflies. It's perfect for mushies. summer. It's very yeah. happy. It really encompasses our show. I love the colors of it. It's very. Mm-hmm. 70s yes kind of and a little bit muted yeah a little bit muted Again, we went up with a lot of neutral bases yeah super yeah. bright colors Love and it. we're obsessed with it so this comes in a t-shirt and also a crew neck the yep. crew neck is a slightly darker color mm-hmm. um and this crew neck is really really good quality and this one you know it's part of our summer launch but this can really transfer well into the fall oh, too because yeah, the colors are very fall and mm-hmm. A little bit of a darker base. It's a little warmer. Yep. Ooh, those would look cute with some like high waisted shorts. Oh, Ooh, yes. yes. Yeah, we can't wait to see you guys in these. Yeah. Um, so we have a crew neck and t shirt. And then our last piece yep. is our t shirt that has this really cute little mushroom flower design on the pocket area. This one just reminds me of summer camp for some reason. Totally. Honestly, yeah, it does. Like the sesh camp. Mm-hmm. 
and it says the sash below it and it's in this really pretty like violet color again super soft Mm -hmm. and we went back and forth on the colors for this whole design for a long time yeah at first it looked nothing like this (laughs) yeah so yeah it's all available now (laughs) it's available now milehiremerch.com yep and that's your one-stop shop for sesh lights out Mm -hmm. mile higher kendall ray um everything is in one place and obviously you can mix and match your order and then we'll all ship it to you in that one order that's right so and yeah it's all it's all launching on the 20th so by the time you guys see this it'll have been out for a few days Mm -hmm. so if you didn't know you might want to hop on hop on because we do have limited quantities we don't it's not like print on demand no we have ordered a certain amount and obviously this is our first launch for the sesh merch so we're not entirely sure Mm -hmm. how much is going to sell so we kind of you know we don't we didn't want to go too crazy so definitely get on it if you are interested in getting something that's right Ah, I feel like a weights and lifts off our shoulders. I know, yeah. It's been a long time coming. Yeah. We're, we're very excited about this. Super excited. Yeah, and thank you to everyone in advance who supports the yeah. show by picking up some merch. We greatly, greatly appreciate it, you guys. Greatly, greatly. Greatly, greatly. Super greatly. Cringe. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> so that's it. No. So, anyway, today's episode is going to be a little different, you yeah. guys. Um, unfortunately, Miss Janelle... Is not going to be here for the rest of the episode. No. She'll be in Florida. Bye. <laughs> yep. So we actually are recording this portion of today's show in advance. Mm-hmm. A few days in advance. Janelle's hopping on a flight tomorrow morning. That's right. I'll be um 4.45. My flight leaves at 7. So I'll be at the airport by now. Headed to the beach. So if you live in Florida, go find her. Yeah, go find me. I'm at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Just go to any beach and uh, take a look. She there. might be there. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so awesome. I was just saying before we started this, how bad I, I wish wanted I could take you. Go, I seriously would just like book a flight last That'd minute nice. and jet the fuck out of here. But I can't. No. Third trimester, you're really not supposed she to fly. Says no, you can't fly. Can not you yet. imagine that happens? People yeah. like go into labor on oh. the plane. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh no. That's how they're yeah, like, literally. Oh no. What the fuck? That literally, would be crazy. What do you do? Also, <laughs> where are you born? Like, what's oh, your yeah. birth certificate? What the state air. are you born? The air. Sky, baby. Sky, USA. That'd be kind of a cool story for the baby. Totally. Like, yeah, I was born in an airplane in the sky. Yeah. But also... Thousands of feet in the air. That sounds fucking yeah. terrifying. In an it airplane does. seat. I can't think of anything more uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. Seriously, me either. But um, just because Janelle won't be here doesn't mean we're not going to have a great episode. We're going to have fun today. Josh is going to be joining us after the break. Yes. And we are going to be doing some answering some of your advice questions that Mm -hmm. you have from our google form so it's going to be a good time and janelle will be back next week i'll be back i'll have fomo but i'm excited to watch it later it'll be fun we will miss you well thanks again guys for supporting us yep Um, malharmerch.com get it now while it lasts and we appreciate you thank you that's right and we'll see you after the break finding and booking a doctor who's right for you doesn't have to be a terrible experience Will they take your insurance? Will they understand your needs? Will they be available when you can see them? Well, with ZocDoc, the answer can be a refreshingly pain-free yes. That's really the right words. It's painful sometimes to find a new doctor. I know oh, we were is. just looking for new doctors and yep. even through like your insurance's website, it's terrible. Yeah, they give is. you no information. Like I wanna see my doctor's face Mm-hmm. before i'm never gonna book a doctor without seeing their face yeah and be able to read reviews that's yeah. huge for me zocdoc is great because it gives you usually reviews on the doctor you can actually see the doctor's face most of the times they have mm-hmm. pictures uploaded yep and it really allows you to book an appointment with confidence yeah and not take a big risk on we've been using zocdoc for a couple years now i mean i think we were started using zocdoc when they first came out i think we were yeah which was like we were one of the first people <laughs> ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance and are available when you need them. Read up on local doctors, get verified patient reviews and see what other real humans have to say about their visit. So that when you walk into the doctor's office, you're set up to see someone in your network who gets you. Go to ZocDoc.com, choose a time slot and whether you want to see a doctor in person or do a video visit. And just like that, you're booked. Find the doctor that's right for you and book an appointment that works with your schedule. In this chaotic world of healthcare, let ZocDoc be your trusted guide to find a quality doctor in a way that is surprisingly pain-free. With ZocDoc, you can get your docs in a row. Mm, love that. <laughs> so go to ZocDoc.com slash sesh and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash sesh. 
ZocDoc.com slash sesh. All right. We are back. And it's another day. It's it was Friday. It's day. <laughs> it was Friday when Janelle and I recorded that intro. It is now Monday. And look who is here. Hello. Mr. Josh himself. Yes, I am here. I am so excited you're here for this. This is yeah. gonna be really fun. Have we done this yet on the sesh? No, I've never done an episode without Janelle. But whenever she's gone, oh, yeah. you're gonna it's be my been go-to. Like, uh, with uh, John and myself. Not yeah. Just you oh and me. yeah. Yeah. So you've been on the sesh before. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Right. Definitely. Right. I mean, you guys know who he is. Yeah. You should know. <laughs> if you don't, <laughs> you better. I'm excited though. What are we? What are we doing today? Today we're gonna be answering some advice. My favorite thing. You know, in another life, I would have been a <laughs> psychologist or a psychiatrist or something. Because honestly, I really do like giving advice. Mm -hmm. And. I've given a lot of people in my life advice. I'll you just have. tell you that. Like people kind of come to me for advice. I take your advice all the time. You do. You give me good advice. Sometimes I give you bad advice though. Sometimes. But most and of the time it gets us it's in good. trouble sometimes, but I always get us <laughs> out of that trouble, which is good. That's true. Usually. That is true. Okay, so most of this that was submitted was relationship related. So okay. I highlighted a lot of those so that we could check those that's out. That's my expertise, so. But we're actually going to start with one that's not relationship related it's okay. actually work and career oh perfect yes what do we got i'm in a predominantly male career and have encountered some people who are incredibly discriminating misogynistic and everything else you can imagine to the point that a particular person who was my boss at the time got me fired for no reason other than that he has publicly said women cannot be pilots I've struggled with my confidence my whole life, and this brought me down. After some therapy and time, I've been healing. But now that there isn't much COVID left, airlines are picking up, and I'm starting to apply and excited to get back in. But I'm afraid to encounter people like this again. And I wanted to know, as successful women, well, not really <laughs> Janelle's here. Hi. Um, but how do you handle situations where people bring you down? How do you maintain confidence in yourself and your abilities? How do you get rid of these awful people? <laughs> Your show's awesome. Keep up the good work. Hmm. Any thoughts from a man? I feel like that's a that's a very common yes. theme that happens out there. Mm -hmm. Well, I mm -hmm. think the first thing you have to remember in that, those types of situations is that the reason that you're getting that response from that individual is because that individual feels challenged or threatened by you. That's right. In some way, perhaps you exude this confidence and ability that scares him mm -hmm. and worries him for his own job. And yeah. most of the times in workplace situations, that's what's going on is that some guys just have, you know, they have issues with women being in charge of them or don't want to, you know, don't want that yeah. sort of dynamic in the workplace. And mm -hmm. it's oftentimes because the women would do it better than they would. And they know that. <laughs> yeah. And so that's why they treat you like that. They're trying to beat you down. They're trying to mm -hmm. get you to just, you know, tuck your tail and run when you should do the opposite yeah, uh, because eventually you're going to just plow right over that dude <laughs> and that dude's got to step <laughs> aside and you're going to be flying the plane. He's going to be cleaning the bathrooms. Okay. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. All right. Yeah. That's just my, my take on it. What about you? What do you think? I mean, I couldn't have said it better myself. I completely agree. And I think you should let that type of thing fuel you to just work even harder and prove them all wrong. And, you know, a lot of that behavior comes is learned behavior yeah, from their childhood patterns, yeah. um, or adults they've been around. My or, guess is this individual's an older gentleman. And, maybe. Um, or they were impacted I mean, by I mean, someone who's older. Based on the description, it seems like an old somebody who's, who's been in the industry a, a, a lot longer, perhaps. And mm -hmm. so for a long, long time, the airline industry has been predominantly male pilots. And, yeah. and so there's probably some old timers there that don't want that to change. And yeah. that's the other thing, too, is people scared of change. Yeah. They're scared of the dynamics changing. They're scared of what will happen if it's true. Uh, they allow this, you know, to to ha to change these cha if they allow these changes to occur, yeah. and so that scares them. So really, you're dealing with a scared man who is lashing out because he doesn't know how to deal with the change that's coming, and he knows is is going to happen whether he likes it or not. Yeah, I 100 percent agree. You said it perfectly. <laughs> He's really good at advice. I'm telling you. Uh, oh man. <laughs> Okay, we have another yes. work-related one. Okay. You want to take that? Yes, please. All right, this one says, I am starting a new job soon. It is a different job role with the same company, basically a promotion. Okay. And I'm really nervous being outside of my comfort zone and meeting new people. 
I will be leading meetings and presentations, which I have not done before. Mm. Sometimes I stumble over my words and struggle with tone of voice. As you guys have three podcasts between you, where you talk for hours or more, I wondered if you could give me some advice. Hmm. Well, I have I happen to have experience in this. Yeah. <laughs> um, before we did all this, I worked in the corporate world. I worked for um, some in IT for financial banking institutions, and there were times where I would be called into a board meeting, and I would have to. Um, either assist the IT director with giving a presentation on, you know, sort of the game plan for the company, or I would just be there setting up all the technology right. for all of these old farts that are in there, <laughs> you know, about to have their little board meeting together. And mm -hmm. I totally understand that that fear of like, you don't want to look silly. You want to look like you, you know, you've got your shit together and you know what you're doing. And I think the best thing, best piece of advice I can give is breathe. You know, because I know for me, sometimes I'd walk in there and my heart rate would go up because oh, yeah. I'd start realizing like these are all important people yes. that could all potentially fire me yep. if they wanted to. And so slowly, you know, try mm -hmm. to calm your heart rate down, take, do some deep breathing exercises yeah. before you go in. Right. And then put a smile on, like yeah. just walk in and smile and be friendly. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, people are going to warm up to you and respond to you better yeah. that way versus if you come in looking scared and nervous. That's true. And then you people, can feed off that energy. People judge you yeah. based on your body language. Mm -hmm. And so if you Makes come in and you're like, hi, how's it going? You know, yeah. just and you exude that confidence. Kind of fake it to make it. Yeah. It, fake it to make it even. Just make them, mm -hmm. even if you don't know what you're doing, make them believe that you do. Yeah. Well, I mean, for us with the podcasts, you'd be surprised to know, especially me, I really struggle even speaking to people that I'm not super comfortable with or like meeting people at a party. I get really bad social anxiety. And anytime I've ever had to do any type of, mainly in school, where I had to stand up in front of people and speak, I would just struggle yeah, hard. Yeah. And um, I think even if I had to do that today with all the experience that I have, being on camera for a living and talking for a living, I still struggle to this day. I was just at a party over the weekend and I sometimes was getting nervous speaking to people that I know that are like friends yeah, with me. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think it's something that you can slowly work on, but definitely don't take how confident we come across on our shows as being like professional speakers. We're not public speakers. No, that's right? such a different you know, thing. It is. Like yeah. we're talking to cameras here. Right. We're not y'all. You know, it would be different if you guys were all sitting in an audience here right now. Oh, and, and we've we were done talking it. To you. Yeah, we've done it before. And, it's and I was a wreck. <laughs> totally different situation, <laughs> right? Yeah, it really is. Because you're seeing, you're able to see that instant feedback mm -hmm. people are giving you because you're looking out at faces as opposed yeah. to cameras. And sometimes we don't even have cameras. So it's, yeah. it's totally different. So just because we look like, you know, we would be great public speakers doesn't mean mm -hmm. because we're podcasters. It's yeah. a totally different medium. And we so. get the luxury of if we mess up, we can edit it out. Right. We can just cut, you, <laughs> you know, know, if yeah, we say something live. wrong or embarrass ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it can be hard even doing live streams. I've gotten really choked up before on live streams, really nervous. One thing I would say is a little bit of advice is a lot of anxiety comes from the anticipation of something happening and ruminating on the thoughts of how this is going to go or how it could go wrong you know, hours before, 24 hours before, even longer than that. And the longer you spend thinking about it, the harder it's going to be versus if you picture it going really well and try to just not let that anxiety hit you until you're in the moment. A lot of the times the things that we imagine are going to happen in our heads are a lot worse than how it's actually going to go. Yeah, that's so, a great point. Yeah. Well said. That's that's about all I got though on that one. Public, public speaking's hard. It'll get easier the more you do it. Public, see? <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult. Okay, so this person is looking for some pregnancy advice. Mm, can't help you there. <laughs> I think you can. You've been through this experience with me. I think you can. Okay. Listen to this. I found out that I was pregnant for the first time in April of this year. Sadly, a few weeks later, I miscarried. My husband and I were absolutely devastated. And I know you both understand that pain as well. Luckily, I was able to get pregnant right away, and now I'm approximately six weeks and due in February. I couldn't be happier, but it's so hard not to be anxious every single day. I know every pregnancy is stressful, and it's normal to worry, but going through a miscarriage so recently makes it ten times makes me ten times more anxious. Do you have any advice for making it through this pregnancy with minimal anxiety? 
You seem to be handling it so well, but surely you understand how I'm feeling. I'm just constantly afraid I'll lose this pregnancy too, and the thought of that is just too much to handle. I'm hoping once I make it through this first trimester, I can breathe a little easier, but I know I'm never truly in the clear. I mean, I'll let you take the first. Yeah. First. It is so hard. Like, I wish there was something that I could say that would just make it better. But I think the most comforting thing to me is knowing that every person, I'm sure pretty much every person has that anxiety through the process. Obviously, it's so much worse when you had a miscarriage. Um, the first trimester was especially difficult for me knowing that that was a possibility. And I was getting to the point where I'm like checking every day of like, what's the percentage that it could happen again at this point? And I did get a lot better after the first trimester. But at that point, second trimester, there's new concerns and there's new worries that come up. Now I'm in the third trimester and there's all these new things and it's birth anxiety and it's this and that. And, you know, um, there's not, I think it's almost something we have to go through to be ready. Like it really, your body prepares you mentally for the anxiety of having a child. Cause once you have this child, you're going to be anxious about them for the rest of your life. Right. Every single yeah. day. Yeah. And you know, I wish there was more I could say as far as trying to stay calm. I mean, what, what has been helpful for us? We've definitely had those moments. You're normally very calming to me. Um, <laughs> Because it's normally me yeah, that gets I, these random moments where I'm just like, I think, panicking. I think, yeah, having somebody to talk through your anxiety with is important. Yeah, and who's open to and and who's going to reassure you as opposed to freak out with you, right? Like yeah. that's the biggest, which thing is, is hard. It's difficult. Your partner yeah, may be right. scared too. Right, right. And you were probably scared. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just like at the end of the day, you can't control. You know, as much as we all want to be in control of our own destiny mm -hmm. and yeah. even our own bodies, it's like yeah. we don't have control. I can't tell. We, none of us can tell our bodies what to do. No. Our bodies just function. Yeah. Without our conscious like decisions mm -hmm. being made about it. it's not like we tell our heart to beat. We tell our heart, you know, our lungs to pump air into them. It's the same thing with pregnancy is like your body's doing the best job that it can to grow this child. And so you have to just trust trust in it and it's hard especially when you go through a miscarriage to yeah trust that it's going to go well again and i i think you just like i don't know i don't know this it's really tough because everybody's different but i think if you just try to remain positive and and talk through those anxieties that you have yeah and you know, educating yourself is always good too. Sometimes it makes you feel worse, but sometimes it can it can reassure you in a good way and make mm -hmm. you feel better, especially as time goes on. In time, yeah, it will get it, it will hopefully get easier as time goes on for you. Yeah. When it um, comes to the miscarriage. Yeah, anxiety. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's tough though. I get it. it. It's totally tough. And yeah. there's not like a yeah, there's not like a perfect answer for that or yeah. a perfect advice for it. I mean, it. I'm still just anxious all the time yeah. and I've just learned that there's really not that much I can do about it other than trying to control my thoughts, trying to breathe through it, right. talk it through. Um, because this process, you don't have a lot of control mm -mm. with any of it. Nope. Um, so it's kind of like you got to learn to roll with the punches. And if you tend to be like, I keep saying I'm a control freak. And so it's kind of hard for me to just sit back and let what happens yeah, happen. Let go and just yeah. let whatever happens yeah. happens. Yeah, Especially with birth coming up. That's, it's a whole different thing, but do you guys have like certain things that um, you would do, like say like your anxiety started to raise or something, mm -hmm. like different ways of yeah, I mean, practicing we that. Try we darken yeah. the room. Yeah, we that do. helps. Mm -hmm. um, we, we have a certain soundtrack that we listen to to sleep and when we're anxious yeah. on YouTube, like oh, rain cool. sounds. Yeah, yeah, put on nature sounds and just sort of yeah try to. And br I mean, really breathing is as silly as mm -hmm. it sounds like taking mm -hmm. deep breaths. It's mm -hmm. really trying to get your heart rate under control so that, yeah, you know, the rest of your body calms down. Because if your heart rate's out of yep. control, that's going to just that's going to make the anxiety worse. Yeah. And trying to refocus your brain on something else. Like even last night, I was getting all stressed out about stuff. And Josh was like, where do you want to take the baby on her first vacation? 
And You're like, I can't think about that. I know. I, know. I was, like, was kind of struggling to do that. Well, but that, I actually did once you, because you fell asleep. And I was like, okay, yeah, now I'm like, stuck. <laughs> I have to do this. Um, yeah. But yeah, I honestly, I think having a soundtrack or like a go-to song or something that is comforting to you and has worked before is really helpful because it triggers my brain now whenever we turn this one soundtrack on that it's like time for calming, time for bed, time to like... That's smart. Relax my brain. Yeah. I that's been very helpful for us. Yeah. All right. Do you want me to read one or? Yeah. I'm getting kind of out of breath these okay. days, guys. It's getting yeah. rough. You guys know what fans Janelle and I are of Olipop. It is one of our favorite drinks long before they started sponsoring the show. We have been huge Olipop fans. And if you've never heard of Olipop, let me tell you a little bit about it. Olipop is a new kind of soda. It tastes just like the sodas that we all grew up with, but unlike other sodas that are filled with sugar and corn syrup and artificial ingredients like aspartame, Olipop is made with natural ingredients that are actually good for you. Olipop is the fastest growing functional beverage brand in America, and they have delicious nostalgic flavors like vintage cola, classic root beer, orange squeeze, cherry vanilla, strawberry vanilla, and their newest flavor, classic grape, which is really, really good. But my favorite flavor is definitely vintage cola. Cola is kind of always my go-to soda if I'm going to drink a soda. And their cola is really, really good. But I don't have to feel bad about drinking it because they use functional ingredients that combine the benefits of prebiotic plant fiber and botanicals to help support your microbiome and benefit your digestive health. Rather than destroying your body, it actually helps you. Yeah, that's right. 90% of Americans consume more than the USDA's daily recommended added sugar intake, which is 30 grams. And sweetened beverages like soda are the leading source of added sugars in the American diet. Olipop, on the other hand, is much lower in sugar compared to conventional sodas with only two to five grams of sugar. And it's from natural sources, so no added sugar. And their vintage cola has just two grams of sugar compared to a regular Coca-Cola, which has 39 grams of sugar. That's crazy. That's honestly really impressive that they've been able to, to do this. Right. All of their products are non-GMO vegan, paleo, and keto-friendly with less than eight grams of net carbs per can. Wow, that's amazing. That way you don't have to drink nasty diet sodas. That's right. With all those artificial sweeteners that yeah. will really mess you up over time. They're so confident that you will love their products that they offer a 100% money-back guarantee for that's all orders company. placed through their website. I know. That means that? they stand behind their product that's 100% right. too. So you know you're getting good stuff. They do. And that's for orders placed through their website. So you can receive 20% off plus free shipping on your order. We recommend trying their variety pack. It's a great way to try all of their delicious flavors. Check it out at drinkolipop.com slash sesh and use code sesh at checkout to claim this deal. That's D-R-I-N-K-O-L-I-P-O-P.com slash sesh. Olipop can also be found at over 8,000 stores across the country, including Walmart, Target, Kroger, Whole Foods, Sprouts and Publix. So someone asked if we have any advice on having a boyfriend with an overprotective mother. E. For context, he is 20 and can't spend the night and has to ask permission for things. Wow, at 20. Mm, that's different. You have more experience with overprotective mothers than I do. Yeah. Um, past boyfriends. Yeah. No, um, not my own mother. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Because my, had... yeah, I don't really have that. You've never experienced that with my mom. No. So not really overprotective in that way. Well, she was kind of when we were in high school. Yeah, well, but concerned. that's like pretty normal, I think, yeah. for her mom. She when was you're to like a healthy 17 degree. Yeah. Versus 20, like you're an adult, so it's yeah. different, I think. Yeah. You're in it, college. You, you're like, if mm -hmm. you did go to college. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's, that's high school. really hard. Um, I don't know if I have. Make friends with his mom. Yeah. <laughs> Get on her good side if you want to make it work. I mean, unfortunately, it's kind of like up to him to set the boundaries and like try to put her in her place more and like get more freedom. Yeah, talk to him about yeah putting his mom in, his, in her place. Yeah, I don't know how much you can do other than talk to him and yeah. work through that. It's difficult. It is difficult. And I'm very, your mom is definitely gives us our space. Well, definitely not like overbearing or overprotective. No, she's never really been, been like that. Yeah, I feel lucky. I have a good mother-in-law. Yeah. That's hard though. Wish we had more advice for you on that one. <laughs> this one says, my boyfriend and I have been together since high school and we recently graduated college. We live together and have pets and I know we are both very serious about each other. I've known he's the one since we started dating. What's the best way to let him know I'm ready to take the next step and get engaged mm. without putting pressure on him? 
I don't want to scare him and make him think I need him to propose right away. I just want him to know I'm ready whenever the time feels right for him to. Mm. We've talked about it over the years and it's never felt like the right time. And now that we're done with school and getting started with our careers, it finally feels like it's time. Mm. Maybe he feels like it's time too and is already thinking. Communicate. Yeah. It's all uh, about communication. Be open. Like that's the key to every, and everybody will tell you this, the key to relationships is communication. It really is though. Like if you don't communicate, relationship is going to go downhill quick mm -hmm. and end mm -hmm. because you are in this together and yeah. getting married is such a big deal. It's such a serious decision too. And it's something that you really should put a lot of thought into before you do it because I don't think people really realize you know, like everyone's like, well, it doesn't change, but it does change because you are, you're becoming one in every facet, right? Yeah. I mean, most couples are, some couples don't do that, but it, it's a whole different dynamic mm -hmm. and you have to be able to communicate with each other on a daily basis about every little thing Yeah. and be able true. to do it hopefully smoothly so that you both aren't miserable, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're scared to talk to him or worried about pressuring him, then you need to talk to him because yeah. you don't want to go into a marriage in that sort of situation where you feel like you're going to bother him about stuff yeah. and you don't talk to him about That's these true. things. Oh, yeah. Because sometimes, like honestly, if he doesn't, if you're worried about him feeling pressured, it's probably it's probably not that at all. He just maybe is not thinking about it as much as you are. It sounds like you're thinking about it a bit more than he has and that's why you're a little nervous about it but mm -hmm. most of the times guys are just just it's not at the the front of their <laughs> uh their priority list mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and you know there's nothing wrong with that it's just men i guess Some so men. how do you think you know as a guy if you were a little more if you weren't thinking about it what would be a good way to bring that up without it coming across as pressuring well i think i think she worded it really well in here like just make sure that the way that you deliver it mm. is in a very chill way right mm -hmm. like you don't want to come across and be like when are we going to get married john yeah like why haven't you proposed already right, right. John, <laughs> i didn't mean to name drop john <laughs> sorry john i meant to say um gerald gerald okay gerald. <laughs> come on gerald all of his dear friends <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, it's just about how you deliver it and, and maybe find like a time when he's really relaxed, you know? Yeah. That always helps too. Yeah. Don't do it when he's like in an intense gaming session or something like that because yeah. it's going to go in one ear and out the other. Yeah. Try to do it either like a, in an intimate time together or, you know, when you're maybe out to dinner sometime. And yeah. Just, and, and don't just like drop it like. Yeah hey, we should get engaged. Be like, maybe just start talking about your future and be like, yeah. where do you see this going? Or start it with a question, yeah. You know, where do, mm -hmm. you, where do you see this going? Do you, how do you feel about getting married? And yeah. just leave it open-ended and just kind of yeah. maybe let him lead you mm -hmm. to that question. Yeah. Or at least it'll help plant the seed for him yeah. to, for him to know like, oh, oh she's thinking she's, about yeah. next steps here. I should, and if he's a yeah. smart guy, he'll start, <laughs> he'll start thinking about that. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, so this one says, my friends and family hate my boyfriend now because of everything I've told them about what he has done to me in the last few years, such as cheating on me, lying, and just not being the best boyfriend. However, he's in therapy now and really working on himself, and I see an effort in him trying to change, but my sister won't even be in the same room with him. I don't know what to do about it. I just want them to like him again. What should I do? That's, that's hard. That's rough. You're going to have to be patient. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's yeah. like you might, first of all, you got to think too, you're with him far more than your sister is probably. Yeah. So you are seeing the changes um, at a much faster rate than they are. And you know a different side of him. Right. Than exactly. You, right. You know, yeah, you know him in a different way than in any of your other family members do. So it's just going to take them time for them to see, you know, those actions and see that reflect in his behavior. Yeah. Um, there's really no way to speed that up. I mean, people are going to take, I mean, they may never come around. That's always an option too. They might have made up their mind and you're going to have to deal with that too. So yep. uh, yeah, I mean, you just be patient and, you know, hold them accountable to those changes too. Like sometimes people do things because they just want to 
make the situation better in the short term and they're not actually interested in long-term change. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so be wary of that as well as that if he is showing you those things now, you also need to give it time so that you can see that those changes actually went deep and yeah. didn't just scratch the surface and yep. just for because he's in therapy he's you know mm. being a good boy now right yeah like yeah you got to see over time it's going to just take time and it's totally possible for him to win them over once again yeah but it's like you got to keep in mind that your friends and family the reason they are acting that way towards him is because they care about you and they're protective of you and they're worried so it's gonna it's gonna take time i agree that's really the best advice is just be patient yeah and if he keeps doing the right things then hopefully yeah. everybody will come back together what do you guys think about the fact that maybe in the future not always over explaining or telling things about the relationship because maybe because that can sometimes i've totally been in this experience not yeah the tea, but it's hard when you have somebody who you really care about your family member and you see them get hurt yeah to yeah to then you know come around right so so maybe, are you saying like maybe maybe keep some of your yeah. relationship details and whatnot or maybe don't share them to that extent yeah. you know unless you obviously like well, really right, need me help too. Yeah, like, yeah 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 we want to be careful about what you tell family because they're going to cling on to the things the right. bad you things. tell them yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and i mean point. cheating that's yeah. hard that's i would i don't know if i could if my sister's boyfriend or something like cheated on her He'd have a big X in my book for a long fucking time. Like I just would. Or like be so your daughter. Angry. What? Like yeah. Would you like oh my your gosh. If our boyfriend? daughter, yeah, we would. <laughs> be really and Josh pissed. would be like never come back. So it's it's hard, but I feel like it's people not can impossible. People change. Like people. Yeah. Like yes. people can change. Do you think and cheaters can change? Or do cheaters I mean, always cheat? I think whatever? everybody has the ability to change. I think it's just. I think some people have you know cheating is a result of other character flaws that that person has mm -hmm. right it's not it's not just cheating isn't just doesn't just go back to one thing you know every, it, like obviously cheating is sexual but it's doesn't that can't be the it may not be the only reason that that person cheated there could be other things yeah. in the relationship that they felt like warranted them cheating right. they weren't getting something from you in other True. ways and there's True. a lot of reasons for it so i think some people that cheat that continue to cheat there is something you know there's something you know usually that lends more towards a sexual mm -hmm. um sort of issue, issue or, or yeah that. flaw that they have mm -hmm. as opposed to a one time i mean it really depends on the cheating right, right how'd it yeah. go down what situation? was the situation was it your best friend was it your mom yeah. was it you know was <laughs> no. it no <laughs> people do crazy stuff i mean i've i've heard some crazy stories but. oh yeah there's some crazy stories in here yeah, there was actually some that were similar like really that. yeah there's wow. actually someone who wrote in like asking about saying that they cheated with their mom their stepdad okay yeah that's a very complex situation <laughs> there. like should they tell their mom and i was like Ugh. i don't know that's that's a little bit above what we can help with <laughs> okay but this one hi kendall and josh i love the sesh and mile higher the advice i would like to have has to do with date a dating situation i'm in I'm currently talking to a guy who I've been dating for some time now. And I've also started talking to and dating another guy, which I really like also. I kind of feel that I'm in this middle position because they're both such great guys. And I know when it comes down to it, I'm going to have to make a decision between the two of them. What I'm struggling with the most is that they're both super nice and both super into me. And I've definitely given the impression to both of them that I'm super into them as well. My question is, can I continue dating them both or do I have to start making a decision? Also, is it wrong of me to be dating two people like this and potentially leading one of them on since I know in the end it will only work out with one? Well, they do it on TV all the time, so yeah. it's not that bad. <laughs> true. Otherwise, That's they true. wouldn't make shows all about it. <laughs> like The Bachelor. I, yeah. I think it's kind of a natural thing, right? Like, I think it's so, I think it's, there's nothing wrong with being attracted to more than one person mm -hmm. because it's just natural and it's, yeah. it's, and especially if you're not, you haven't committed or, or been exclusive, said we're exclusive with any one of them, then you're not doing anything wrong. I just think that right. the longer it goes on, the harder it's going to be to break away from one of them. Because there's going to be a point at eventually, unless you're planning to be, be a polygamist and have multiple 
you know, or, or not even not even a polygamist, but just there's people that have two girlfriends. Polyamorous. So, yeah, polyamorous. Is that what I'm looking for? Yeah. Okay, polyamorous. Yeah. There's polyamorous people. So unless you're planning to be to do that, that's fine. But otherwise, somebody's going to end up getting hurt in that situation, right. and and all parties would have to like want to do that, right? In exactly. order to make Agree that, to that work. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, I would probably start figuring out which one yeah. is the better fit if that's what you're if you're looking for a long term relationship. One of them's got to be yeah, you know, write out a pros and cons list. But you don't want to rush that decision necessarily unless one of them is getting angry right, and they're like as long as you're being open about it that i'm dating transparent, two yeah, people yeah. you know you don't want to make <laughs> them that think that they're back. both yeah right Th then you might lose both exactly Ooh. you don't yeah. want to lose both you if you want one then you got to be open and honest with them yeah so you could keep feelings. it going a little longer as long as you're honest and maybe one of them will just decide they're not into it anymore and dip and then the decision's easier for you <laughs> there you go that's a good point <laughs> you never know okay we're gonna take a quick break and we will be right back you guys, Josh and I are really busy between running our we business. <laughs> yes, we are. Between taking care of our 10 pets, running our two businesses, hosting all our different shows. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of time these days. And now we have a baby on the way. So HelloFresh. How are we going to survive? <laughs> I don't know. Thanks to HelloFresh, though, they make our lives a lot easier when it comes to our meals because they take the thinking out of it and the whole process is just pain free. Here's what I like about it. I like okay. the fact that I can go on to hellfresh.com yep. and I can pick out my menu for like the month or two months. You can do it so many weeks out, which is nice. Yeah. So you just like spend an hour or two on there and you can have all your meals pre-planned. They already have all the menus uploaded, which is amazing. That's what I love about it is that it makes it so easy. And they allow you to do add-ons now. They'll let you swap proteins, veggies. Mm -hmm. it, they're starting to really allow you to customize it, which is cool because there's yeah. been some times with recipes where I'm like, yeah, what could have done without this yeah. artichoke in this, this dish? <laughs> Josh is a little picky. Or I would have throw threw some chicken in here, something More like protein. that. More mm protein. -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And they allow you to do that now, which is cool. And what's cool is HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than dining at a restaurant and even cheaper than grocery shopping. That's money back in your pocket. Yeah. Delivery adds up, as we all know. Yeah, it does. Fast. Plus, HelloFresh teaches you how to cook pretty much and yeah. like cook mm -hmm. different types of cuisines. And mm -hmm. and just from its simple recipe cards, like you can actually learn uh, new cooking concepts. Yeah. And that's something you can have forever. It's the recipe yeah, card is exactly. yours. You can remake it exactly. as many times as you want. And now HelloFresh has 30 dinner recipes to choose from every single week. That's the most choices of any other meal kit. So what are you waiting for? HelloFresh is amazing and you've got to sign up. Go to HelloFresh.com slash SESH16 and use code SESH16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Again, that's HelloFresh.com slash SESH16. Use code SESH16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. This one is a little spicy here. I've been sleeping with my husband's brother. Oh no. Should I come clean to my hubby or just call it quits with the brother? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sweep boy. it under the rug. Oh no. Please help. <laughs> I can't help you there. Oh, I know. That's dicey. Yeah, you got yourself into a pickle, man. Yeah, big old pickle. What happens if his brother tells him? Oh, on yeah, you. you might not have any choice in the matter. Honestly, you probably want to get a head start on this and, and yeah. have that conversation with your husband before your brother or his brother yeah. tells him. And then he's pissed because you were trying to hide it from him. That's hard, especially since you guys are married and the brother <laughs> thing. The brother thing's a whole different dynamic. Like maybe he'd be able to get over it if it were like a coworker, or like a <laughs> friend or something. But uh, brother, that's so that's like really hard. I don't know. And I think you should think about why you did it. Yeah. You know, like you didn't just do it because. Yeah. I mean, that's a good. Point. My guess is this wasn't just like a drunken night mistake, which maybe it was, but. No, this is I've been sleeping with. Him oh, for, okay. Like, so it's then been an ongoing maybe thing. it's time to let, you know, let your husband go. Like if you're yeah. not into it anymore, then it's not really fair. It's not yeah. fair to him. I mean, no. is he sleeping with your sister? <laughs> so, I mean, that might, then it might be okay. Maybe you got an agreement worked out, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think you really just owe him to be honest. On the buck up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not I much you can do there. I mean, you can try to keep, keep it under the. Mm. No. Keep it going under the surface, but it's going to come out eventually. Yeah, it will. And like keeping that secret for the rest yeah. of your marriage, if you do keep moving on, that's just horrible oh. for you and for him. And just, you don't want secrets, man. Yeah. I Nobody agree. Nobody wants secrets in their You've marriage. You've got to tell them it's going to be hard and it may go really badly, but I don't think there's any other option. I mean, if you made that choice, you got to yeah. 
You gotta gotta live with the consequences. <laughs> it's true. No it's easy true. way around that one. Yep. Yep. Hi, Kendall and Josh. I'll try to keep this brief. What are your thoughts and opinions on cutting out family members that you deem are toxic? My husband's brother seems to love causing drama and picking fights every chance he gets. It seems like his goal is to always inflict the most guilt or pain when he does this. This was a big fighting point in our relationship a few years ago, but we have switched our mindset to dealing with this as a team instead. I used to get frustrated that he wouldn't stand up for himself. I'm also in a similar situation with my sister. It is more directed at my mom, though. I know people always say family is family, but when is enough enough and time to cut these people out of your life? It's hard. We have differing opinions on this one. Oh, yeah, we kind of do. Yeah, you don't like cutting people out of your life, especially no. family members. You refuse to do it. I do. And I mean, that's... Well, I've had to do it before. Mm. I've had to do it. Several people. I'm not going to bring it up here, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like, like close, close people. Yeah, they were close, close people at one point. Mm, sort of. Had to make the cut. Yeah. I mean, I mean, but you it, don't like to do it. No, people have to go to like the extreme. For yeah, me to right. Exactly. Actually do that. Yeah. Whereas I am on the side of sometimes people need tough love. And sometimes it and, works and then they end yeah, up coming back. Right. Well, that I mean, I've had to do that with my own parents um, before and I pretty much cut them out for the most part for, you know, quite a while, a few years. And because I, I felt like I was being mistreated and they weren't fulfilling their roles as parents and that was really really hard for me yeah i'm and, surprised you even want to share that yeah i mean i'm just i'm i'm fine now we're good now but yeah, like it are. worked and yeah. in order i felt like they were never going to get the the message unless i gave them this hard, you know drew this hard line and just cut communication with them and what that allows that especially in this type of dynamic is it allows them to really think about what did they do because you know, if they really love and care about you, they're going to start thinking about why. Well, why'd they cut me out? Yeah. And they might be mad. They're going to be pissed off for a while, sure. And they're going to they're going to blame you, and they're going to say you did this to them, and this is all your fault. But ultimately, if they really love you, then they are going to realize why you did it, mm. and they're going to come back, and you guys can come back at a later time, and after you've had time to think about all the things that went wrong in your relationship mm. and try to reconcile and, and find yeah. a middle ground and compromise. I just, for me, it's harder because it's like family is family. Like it, I've just been kind of raised that way and, but I've seen it not work but out. It's also destructive. I know. If you, and it did work for you because I was kind of against that at the time. And, but you know, you have a great relationship now. So, yeah, and I got I ultimately got the respect that I was looking for and yeah. And you can only take so much bullshit. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, I mean before it's becoming abusive, you know. Well, it's just like life is too short to be around people that bring you down, right? Mm -hmm. And just it's because true. and and this is the thing too. It's like, yeah, family's blood and like family's everything, but family do, you know, just because you are blood, that doesn't mean that you just get to, you take shit forever mm -hmm. from your family members and you it's can't true. do anything about it. Like you have to, you have to like, at the end of the day, despite us being family and related and whatever, you are your own person. They are their own person. And the only one that you can control is yourself. And the only one they can control is them. So, no, it's um, true. you know, You're there's right. not, it's not like we're all a part of this, like a family's not like this larger organism that we are all like the legs of yeah. and you know, it's like this physical thing that we all have to be connected to in order to survive. Like we can all survive completely fine on our own without our families. Yeah. And it, a lot of families don't realize that and they feel that their children or their, you know, their loved ones have to be connected to them and be on the same page as, as them all the time. Otherwise, there's a major issue and that's just not the way that it is. Like ultimately mm -hmm. your family, including your own kids are their own, their own person and they are going to live their own life according to how they want to live. Yeah. It's and true. so you have to be open to changing that. You can't just be like, well, this is our family. So, you know, like yeah. it or get out. Like it's just, yeah, it's a lot more complicated than that. And it is, but family relationships are just complicated in general. Mm -hmm. And it's hard when it's, you know, you're talking about your, 
boyfriend's brother. That's, I mean, he's going to be the one who has to make the final call on that. Okay, this one is pretty interesting. Should I have a rebound partner for financial purposes when I leave my boyfriend? I have been wanting to break up with my boyfriend for a while now, but I keep dragging things out. I know I've fallen out of love with him, but he pays all the bills, buys groceries, etc. And I do not have a job. Side note, I don't just sit at home all day when he goes to work. I do keep the home clean and I babysit for my best friend a few days out of the week. Even though I babysit a few days out of the week, it wouldn't be enough money to pay the rent, bills, food, etc. So when I go to break up with my boyfriend, I'll obviously need a job. Should I get a job before I break up with him or should I find another man with a good job to be able to fall back on before I leave current boyfriend and secure my finances? Whoa, that sounds really bad. Please, no judgment. Thanks in advance. (laughs) Sounds like a major moral dilemma. Yeah, that's a toughie. So, I mean, from a logical perspective, I see your thinking. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, find somebody in a similar situation that your current man is in. Yeah, and I'm glad you're you're realizing you shouldn't just stay with him just because he's paying the bills and you're trying to come up with a plan. Right. Well, what's going to be best for you long term? Because say you find another man to pay the bills and, you Mm -hmm. know, you find the exact same situation. What if you end up in the exact same type of relationship again where you're not happy? That's right. Are you just going to keep hopping to the next man who's got money and pays for the bills and never be happy? Or I think you might end up being happier if you go out and make your own money and you have the power in the relationship and feel that for once and have the power of your own life to live live without a man and you don't need somebody else to pay the bills for you and i know it's hard to to be single and yeah you know live but there's lots of ways to find roommates there's tons of resources out there to mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. There's tons of people that rent out rooms and houses and things like that. Yeah. There's always a doable situation. I think you just got to look into those, you know, mm-hmm. different suggestions because you might be surprised that, you know, you don't like, you don't have to go out and like have this huge career to be able to just survive on your own. Like there's ways to do it mm-hmm. without or get an also, additional part-time job right, or exa- more babysitting. Maybe. Right. Exactly. And not have to like put yourself in that same position over again. And yeah. maybe, you know, maybe you go out there and you find a guy and you fall in love and he is willing to take care of you or yeah. pay the bills. And that's fine too. I mean, however your relationship dynamic works is great, but I wouldn't want you to go and try to find this person to replace the other guy, you know, cause then you're going to be like rushing because you know, you have to end things with your current boyfriend and you may end up with the wrong guy and you don't want to be with someone just for finances. You want to be with them for love. Obviously that's first. So Um, yeah, I think focusing on yourself, trying to, you know, better your own situation and, um, find more security for yourself or your own comfort. It's going to make you happier. Yeah, I agree. And if someone else comes along, like you said, that's great. But I, what happens if you end up finding a guy that you really like and you see a future with and his deal breaker is, is that I want a spouse or partner who's going to help contribute financially. Yeah, that's a good and point. And you like you're at that point you end up having to go start your job career then and yep. now you have this perfect opportunity to go and do that right now and just make that jump. Yeah. As opposed to take the, you know, in your eyes the easier, safer option, you know. So you she, could, but So she get a job before she breaks up with her current guy. Absolutely. I think so. Yeah. That'd be the smart thing to do. I think you start there and yeah. And yeah, you don't want to be like trying to date behind his back and like looking for other people on apps. Yeah, or yeah that's just going to get complicated yeah. and not end well. Yeah, and make he it could find out. And then yeah, yeah, I mean. Then you, he could just kick you out. Yeah. And, and it's then not fair you have to no him. job and then you're yeah. really screwed because yeah. yeah. what yeah. are you going to be homeless looking for a guy to, you know, yeah, let you move in? Like that's going to be difficult, I think. Yeah. I was going to say, it's extremely, personally, I don't know about you guys, but don't you feel empowered, like, from your own self when you, you know, say you do well in your job or you get yeah. a job and you're you're good at something, you learn something, it's extremely empowering. So totally. just not even for the 
you know, logistical things, right. but just for yourself, I feel like. That's a great point. You'll it feel would just good. be good for you. Yeah. yeah, I agree. This one says, hey guys, I was hoping you could give me some advice on my relationship. My boyfriend and I have been together for four years and our biggest problem has been his lack of empathy mm. and emotion. Mm. I've been struggling with PMDD, premenstrual dysphoric disorder, which can make my depression and anxiety worse for a few days before my period. It's gotten a lot better over the years, but I still have my off days. Anyways, this is usually when we argue the most. We argued pretty badly recently, which led me to cry and have a panic attack. While I cried, he watched videos on his phone and fell asleep. Oh no. Oof. We talked about it the next day and he said that he avoids me when I cry because he sees crying as a childish thing and he doesn't know how to deal with it, so he just mm -hmm. avoids it. He's done this our entire relationship and it honestly makes me feel pretty lonely because I don't have his emotional support. I've been hiding my emotions from him for months in order to avoid this, except just recently when I slipped up and cried around him. I'd appreciate any advice. I don't know. I don't even know how to answer this one because it's tough. Um, it is. I would start thinking about what does he, what kind of support does he provide mm -hmm. you? Because it seems like you're needing this emotional support from him and that's a big deal for you. Yeah. And if you're not getting it from him, then yeah, I don't know. As as hard as it might be, you might want to think about if he's the right person mm -hmm. for you long term. If that's something, obviously it's difficult to go through medical uh, conditions and it can be really hard. I know we've we've been through that. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know, depression, anxiety. We've we've been through all that together. And I think it would have been a very different situation if I acted like this. Oh yeah. I think you would have. <laughs> probably throw yeah. me out at that well point. i like i'm super emotional so i need someone who's gonna mirror that but it's hard because not everyone is capable of having empathy or showing that type of emotion it might just be their personality the way they grew up what they were raised around i think what's not okay is him calling saying it's a childish thing that's hurtful crying is a childish thing yeah and i mean he that Again, that might be something that he was taught. Yeah, it's clearly a learned behavior. Of yeah. His because whoever, someone at some point told him maybe crying is for babies or yeah. something. And, and it seems like he gets almost like triggered by it in a way where he doesn't want to be, it upsets him, stresses him out, makes him uncomfortable. So then he wants to ignore it and play the games. And in reality, if you're laying in the same bed and you're over here crying, he probably knows and is aware that he's yeah. being kind of a dick by ignoring you, but it's like his way of pushing back at you. And like, he wants to let you know that it's not going to bother him that you're crying, that it doesn't make him feel bad, which again, does that, is that something that you want in a relationship with someone? Yeah, I mean, you are the only person who knows this person right? and what other qualities they have. Um, I would say you probably should evaluate what qualities you do like about this person and maybe those, you know, hopefully those pros outweigh all the cons. Yeah. Because, I mean, at some point in a relationship, you got to weigh your needs versus yeah. what you're getting from that person. Mm -hmm. And if your mm -hmm. needs are not being met or you're not being supported in the ways that you need to be supported, yeah, then it's only a matter of time before it's all going to fall apart. Yeah. I hate to say that, but it's just the you. truth. Like eventually yeah. something really serious is going to happen. And then, yeah. I mean, it could derail the whole thing. And mm -hmm. if, if he's already having this much trouble dealing with anxiety, depression, you know, medical disorders, things like that, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you're, you're upset and it could be causing you to have more, you know, go further into depression and yeah. have more anxiety. I mean, you really should think, is this the type of person that I right. want in my life right. and in a, be in a relationship with? And we're not saying necessarily give up on this person right away. I mean, you're the only person, like we said, who knows him and right. knows the situation and knows what good qualities he has and you know what makes you want to be with him at the end of the day. You and could is it consider, something that he can work through? Right. If you were to, when you're not you know, in the middle of a panic attack, you know, yeah. when you guys are both calm or maybe you guys are in, mm -hmm. at your happiest points together, that can mm -hmm. be a great time to bring up. That's a good point. Concerns are just like, hey, you know, when I have yeah. these panic attacks or I'm going through, you know, my period, like, yeah, this is, it would be really great if I could just get some more support. Yeah. And I know that's hard because sometimes yeah. like bringing up that like pain and like something that's hard for you can 
trigger those emotions back up, even if you're in a right. happy That's true. time, That's true. it can be difficult. But if you can try to stay calm and keep it, you know, level headed when discussing it, I think it's probably not the best time to discuss it when you're in mm -hmm. that emotion and you're, you know, because obviously you're going to feel it the most. You're going to feel the most angry and most hurt during that time. But if you can try to come to bring it, like you said, to a time where things are at a more stable place, that can be really, really helpful. Also, therapy. We yeah, love third, therapy a third here. Party yes. Could help with that. Or even just writing a letter to him or something. Yep. Something for him to read. Maybe he'll take that yep. medium differently. That's a good I I like that too. So like a therapist yep. would probably say something like that. Yeah. And couples counseling can be super, super, super helpful. Especially when you guys process emotion differently. That's like a great it's a, yeah, it's a yeah. big, time a for big it. obstacle for sure. Yep. Yep, but it's not, you know. It's not, not, yeah, it's not like doom and gloom. Like you can no. work through it as long as the other person yeah. is willing to, to give. Right. Okay, we will be back with a few more questions after this break from our sponsors. Do you want a new credit card and maybe you're not sure how to choose which one because there's so many options? Well, you don't need to apply for the first offer that you get in the mail. Credit Karma can help you zero in on the right option for you and apply with more confidence. Credit Karma uses your credit profile to show you offers that are tailored to your specific financial situation. And Credit Karma partners with a wide range of card issuers, so you can be sure that you are exploring all sorts of options. And best of all, Credit Karma uses your credit data to show you your chances of approval before you even apply, which helps you apply with more confidence. Comparing cards on Credit Karma is 100% free, and it won't affect your credit score. We've all used Credit Karma before, I'm sure. I know I have over the years to keep track of my credit score. If you're not actually keeping track of your credit score, then you need to start doing that right now because credit is so important in this world and you can't really do anything without it. And what's great about Credit Karma is they now show you based on your credit score, which you can go and log in and check all that whenever you want, which is nice, what cards you'll actually get approved for or have a higher chance of getting approved for. Because I know in the past I've applied for cards. I'm like, Ooh, that diamond platinum card sounds nice. I'm going to apply for it. And my credit was nowhere mm. near to where you need to be in order for some, because some of these credit cards have higher credit mm. um, requirements for yeah. it and other, other factors they play into it. Rejected. Uh, yeah, I got totally rejected. And every time, you know, you apply, mm -hmm. they do a credit check or soft check or whatever, but it still hurts your credit score. So mm -hmm. this allows you to have the best chances of getting approved for the card that you want. So ready to find the card for you? Head to Credit Karma and check out your personalized mix of offers today. Go to creditkarma.com or use the Credit Karma app to find the card for you. That's creditkarma.com. All right, you ready for another one? Yep. Josh and Kendall, have you ever hit a slump in your relationship? How did you revive the love and the fun? What was the last slump we had? We've had several slumps. Yeah, it's been a while, I think. But. Yeah, I mean, we've been together going on 12 years, so there was plenty of time for slumps over the years. But yeah. I feel like right now we're at a really high point in our relationship, like one of the best times we've had. Yeah, surprisingly working together, I think, has brought us a lot closer I know. than I thought it would. I thought it would destroy <laughs> us. But, oh, no. But, Don't say that. You took that risk? <laughs> yeah, he's like, but I tried. <laughs> yeah, no, it's surprisingly been really good for us, which is kind of weird. But Yeah, I, I'm trying to remember like the last slump we had. Uh, well, I can think of several slumps. Um, I think I think there's been several very stressful periods of our life. Yes. Where, I'd say where my health was. Our yeah, last yeah. one was probably where my health was yeah. really, I was really chronically ill. Yeah. And before I got help and yeah. I had some treatments yeah, and good. I probably... chronic uh, Epstein-Barr virus reactivated and it was really hard because we didn't know what it was and it created all these issues and obviously like impacted our sex life and mm -hmm. Just my overall emotions was super just struggling. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was like, it felt like a lot of just one way sort of, like you're worried about your, like you're just trying to feel yeah. okay. Yep. And in a relationship, obviously you want, you know, those feelings to go back and forth, right? Yeah. Like you want to feel the love, you want to receive the love and you want to give the love. That's right. And so when you're not capable of giving right the other it's, person can it's feel, difficult yeah. it's very difficult especially in this situation because we didn't know what was wrong with you and yeah we went to a lot of doctors we looked at a lot of different tests and mm -hmm. conditions and nothing nothing was coming back and yeah. so 
you know at a certain point you start wondering you're like is like is this not something physical is it something mental yeah um, i had those thoughts on? too like are mm -hmm. you is, is there it some... in my head yeah exactly. i literally felt like because doctors were like telling me like you're just stressed and right. i started to feel like i'm cr i must be crazy and then you started to wonder well just... we're going to like really really smart yeah. people it's asking the for doctors answers and they didn't and, know what the fuck and they had no idea what was going on which and... side note josh was the one who figured it out it's crazy <laughs> dr josh here it's a story for you. another day yeah. but yeah you actually did and then we got correct testing and and boom yeah, you're a different person that you're back to your normal self again and I know. it's very difficult to to go through a slump though and i think i think as long as you remember that why you got into this yeah. in the first place and you and you feel like you can work together to get out yeah. of it i yeah. think slumps are just natural it's just a part of yeah it, it can't I always it be a high too. right no it can't and we've had plenty of slumps over the years where we felt like roommates. Like, remember how many times, yeah. <laughs> especially in college, where we'd be like, we're like roommates now, and we'd get all upset, and, you know, just kind of, you hit like a, I don't know. Yeah, slump is a good word for it. Well, you, when you're with somebody for so long, you hit a comfort level with them that is, the, like, unlike anything else, right? Yeah. Like, you are just so comfortable with that person that sometimes you start wondering, like, are we just like best friends now and yeah and like and we definitely have and that. that's why and to avoid that that's why intimacy is so important because it is that keeps you though. from going you know going into the friend zone mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you've got to keep that spark alive and keep the attraction you know building and and all that so how did we do it you just do it. <laughs> just <laughs> like, do it. You just gotta I know. do it. I don't I know mean, if we have like anything specific. A lot of it's patience and like talking, like hanging on through it because it does like most of the time get better. I mean, it could go the other way too. It could get worse. Yeah. Have you guys experienced slumps in your relationship? Oh, yeah. I feel like when we were in North Carolina too, just because literally we were together every day and we didn't have any other friends and it was fine. Mm -hmm. Like I really enjoyed it, but there were definitely times where I was like, hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah, like my felt like just my friend, and yeah, I yeah. feel like just time changes it, and then or getting out and doing things. Like mm -hmm. I think getting out of the house was really big for us. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, date nights. Yeah, well, because you guys went from being long distance for like eight years, and every time you would see each other, it was short periods of time. Right, they were super exciting, and then you went to every day, and you kind of hit that boring yeah phase, and that's hard. I think there was <laughs> not to like judge a relationship but i think there's a lot of adjustment on you know jared's oh, part oh and yeah your, your, yeah uh, it was definitely we like had to grow we had to grow up a lot but he because i mean his, he had his just lifestyle out of college and stuff so yeah and was, he yeah, was totally away different. from you so he was adjusting to being with you all the time and oh i think i annoyed him a lot probably <laughs> for a little while <laughs> which is totally normal we're I mean, made yeah. to annoy yeah, it makes sense like especially in his situation when he was living with a bunch of guys guys every day doing mm -hmm. guys guy shit every day yeah like mm -hmm. i can see how that would happen <laughs> like i i feel like i would have probably done the same thing but yeah and i think it's just dependent on the couple too right every yeah. couple's different like some couples prefer not to be together all the time because they like to have sort of what gets them excited mm -hmm. is being you know seeing each other after being away from each other all day long that does work for us though too it, we it like miss does. each other it does yeah, it or does. if one of us is gone, even for like a couple of days. <laughs> or a couple like, hours, I go to the grocery <laughs> store and come back and I'm you're like, just... I miss you. You're yeah. like the dogs. You're like the dogs that <laughs> when we run an errand and come back, they act like they haven't seen us for 30 I years. I'm I'm like the same. Jared and I are like really, we hang out with each other all the time mm -hmm. and we're totally cool with doing that. So I'm yeah. the same way. Yeah. yeah. Like I sit here and he sends me like Snapchats. I'm like, oh my God, I miss my fiance, my dog. Yeah. <laughs> I, we like... Just the other morning, I like dropped you off for a hair appointment. I was all excited to pick you up just like an hour <laughs> later. See, for me, like I could probably go like, yeah, a little while at least. At least, I mean, a few yeah. days a week, I could go a little while. I mean, I, I don't, like, I don't, leave. I don't, I don't <laughs> mind being alone for no. for a while. I kind of miss some of my alone time, but but it's like when I come back, if yeah. we do have time apart, it, yeah. it kind of does re excite does. everything. So maybe you guys need some time apart. Um, date nights are good. Yeah. Or getting away together, like even somewhere yeah. simple, like a staycation. Staycations are great. We used to do those all the time when we weren't working so much. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we really got to start doing them again. Yeah. But yeah. yeah it, it can be difficult though. Here's a non-relationship 
more career-based one that I thought you might find interesting. Hi, Kendall and Josh. My name is Crystal. I'm from New York, and I recently started a new career in November as a 911 dispatcher. Very cool. I worked very hard and waited four years to be here because it is a civil service job. The job offers full benefits and has allowed me more financial freedom than any other job I've had. However, now that I'm here, I'm unsure if I can be happy in the long run, which has been a hard pill to swallow. I'm just not sure if the money and the benefits are worth the physical and mental stress that comes along with this line of work. Mm. Also note, I have been a volunteer EMT for seven years, so this type of stress is not new to me but I don't know how long I can wake up and experience the worst parts of the world every single day. I've contemplated dropping everything and moving completely out of the state to Michigan where my closest cousin lives in order to start over from scratch. But the thought of leaving everything I've worked so hard for is crushing. I've started seeing a therapist to see if I can work through this, but I've always said I would choose happiness over money. I'm torn and don't know what the right move is as I also have a 13 year old daughter to consider in whatever decisions I make. Mm. what would you guys do in this situation that is hard dispatch is a tough tough job i mean i give mad props to anyone who's a dispatch all first responder jobs are hard Mm -hmm. yeah it's all and so uh, you said it perfectly like you see the worst parts of the world every single day and Mm -hmm. that is the truth Mm -hmm. and that weighs on anybody yeah it can Um, leave you with a lot of trauma and then you're like in a position where all you can do is send the right people and you have to act so quickly and you know you're just like behind a phone so you can't directly make an impact you may never know what happens to the person it just can like leave you with well even just being a volunteer emt too i mean she's yeah she's dealt with it in person too so you've had you've had both experiences Mm -hmm. i hate to say this but honestly it seems like you need to find a new line of work um because is it worth your happiness? happiness is way more than money or yep. or stability like it's true you you got to think about your daughter too like your daughter which which version of you of you do does she enjoy more like mm-hmm. the stressed out barely getting through the day yeah. uh version of crystal or does she like the version of you that's happy relaxed and and i get like money we all got to make money we all got to pay our bills but there's all there's lots of ways to make money these days there's lots of different types of careers and mm-hmm. What's great is that we live in a time where, you know, a lot of those lines of work don't require all this education and experience in order to get started into it. And, you know, you live in New York, I'm sure the cost of living there is pretty high. So maybe a move to Michigan is not the worst idea. Mm -hmm. Michigan's uh, beautiful. Yes. And starting fresh there. And because, yeah, I mean, it sounds like you're going to you're going to burn yourself out. Mm -hmm. and you're already feeling that way and it's like if you're not getting enough of the rewarding feeling from it then well yeah that's got to outweigh that other part otherwise it's just not worth it Mm because you're and and it's good that you're realizing this now as opposed to just dealing with with it for another seven to ten years yeah and then you're in a much more difficult situation at that point so my advice would be start looking at what types of things you could do in michigan and if that's like a, seems like a good place for you to go and good place for your daughter to go like that's not a bad bad idea yeah because ultimately you know there's a million jobs out there but there's only one of you and you got to take care of yourself you got to take care of your mental mental health stress levels because you need to be the best version of you for your child all right we are going to answer one more this one is not work is not relationship related, not work related, family related. So I am a 19 year old female. I live with my mom and every weekend we go have dinner with her mom. So her grandmother. Every time I see my grandmother, there is some comment on my weight, my clothes, my diet, unrealistic job, etc. I've had an eating disorder for a decade and a lot of my expectations were set under her ideals. I want to be clear. I know no one is responsible for my ED but myself but her influence was not necessarily positive. It turned into something that I dread doing because I always leave feeling like shit about myself, but I feel bad not visiting and I also wanna avoid having a trigger every week. I really don't know what to do at this point. Any advice? Well, that is hard because you you do have limited time with your grandmother, but is it worth that type of pain? Have you talked to her about I mean, it's these like things? abusive? Yeah. Have you right. said, "Hey, Grandma, that's mean. <laughs> Fucking stop!" <laughs> like, because 
my grandmother even would comment on our weight all our whole lives. Yeah. But it was not from sounds like an such a negative perspective. No. But I think we love her very much. It, I think there's like this generational thing with a lot of grandparents that, that yeah. is like just something a lot of grandparents mm -hmm. do and care about for some reason. Well, because probably they were judged by their own parents and their own grandparents, and it's like they have a less of understanding for feelings. Well, it could also normally. be too that maybe like her doctors like telling her to watch her weight because oftentimes could in your be. elder years they're they're like really watching your weight yeah closely and so it could just be like a you know sort yeah. of subconscious thing that she's doing but she's also talking about her clothes her diet her unrealistic job you know it seems like she's picking on her so maybe be like hey grandma if you want me to come see you again yeah i need you to Here's stop talking to me about these mm -hmm. things which could be and, hard, and then see but... what she says to that and if she says you might be surprised at her response and be like, it really hurts my feelings. Really, you know, yeah. Maybe you need to just be like straight up with her. Be mm -hmm. like, if you keep doing this to me, I'm not going to be coming back. Yeah. Do you want to see me or not? Yeah. I, and I think explaining it to her the way you're explaining it to us, that you want to see her, you love her, but it's not worth the pain that you're experiencing and being triggered every time that you're around her. And she probably doesn't want, hopefully, doesn't want to hurt you. If she does, then that's a whole different issue. But maybe she doesn't realize that what she's saying is hurtful. Right. Maybe she's trying to think. Yeah, she could be trying to help you. If she, you know, and that's that's another thing that grandparents, parents always go after is the unrealistic job or like what you're doing with your future, your career. And oftentimes they don't understand love, but, too that the world right. we live in is so different from totally. when they lived in it. Like totally. nowadays, you can be tattooed, you can have. Yeah. You know, you can be, you can look a certain way. Right. And in their generation, yeah. it was like, hell no, you never be yeah. hired. Yeah. But it's like nowadays, it's nobody totally gives a shit. Like you yeah. can dye your hair, you can do whatever yeah. you want with your clothing and nobody cares yeah. for the most part. Yeah. So I feel mm -hmm. like a lot of this is generational. I think it's just like. Totally. And all these new jobs. Yeah. Um, yeah. My, I've definitely had grandparents that did not understand what we're doing. Yeah. They're like, what? internet you're just talking on the internet yeah well i remember even you got the degree even with what like are you doing <laughs> tattoos right like yeah that was like yeah. a big deal with my parents like don't ever get tattoos because you'll never get hired <laughs> yeah. and it's like that never is impacted mm -hmm. any sort of job i've ever had yeah so it's just a lot of it's generational it's a lot of it's like what their parents told them and so they're just trying to yeah you know it may not be coming from a bad place but it's true just call her out yep i think that's it starts with the communication it all starts with a word. <laughs> That's right. Most of these situations, it seem like, you know, communication is needed. Yep. That's all we have for today, though. We've been going for quite a while. That's it. All yep. right. Thank you so much for joining. You're today. welcome. You're welcome. You Which, do great advice, babe. Oh, thank you. I hope someone out there found some of this helpful in some way. Yeah, or That's the goal. At least interesting to listen to. Yep. But if you're looking to listen to more of me, not advice, but other... <laughs> He's got to do a little self-promo. Yes, I do. I'm, I have to. You deserved it. Even though there's probably so much crossover between all of our <laughs> oh, shows there anyway. But I do have a paranormal podcast called Lights Out. Mm -hmm. um, very cool. But what you may not know about is he's also got a... Planet Sleep. Yeah, a sleep Really podcast. fun project. It's a sleep slash just relaxing. If For those of you that have anxiety or... Mm -hmm. You just want something to help calm me down or listen to, like we said, soundtrack. Like honestly, yeah. Planet Sleep's great. Oh, I should have pushed Planet Sleep when we were I know. talking about that. I was very disappointed that you didn't. <laughs> I'm sorry. You didn't use that as a <laughs> It's so good. We plan to play it for our daughter. Yeah, and I mean I've even thought about doing some more like breathing and meditation mm -hmm. type mm -hmm. type stuff on there too. And yeah. I do a little bit of, of breathing stuff at the beginning and I think there's something so relaxing about very calm music and mm -hmm. nature sounds mm -hmm. and then a calm narration like and there's a visual version on youtube as well is, yes. so you can like fall asleep to it what's cool about it is it's not like most sleep related stories and stuff like that because most of the time those are very fluffy and like pointless so that your brain can like shut off but josh's people always comment how they kind of want to stay awake sometimes because they're interesting yeah, yeah they're yeah. it's filled with information it's educational um, the writer on it is amazing. So, yeah. yeah. It's I about mean, lots of places across the world. We mm -hmm. talk, you know, I'd have sleep stories on space, on yeah. national parks, to rainforests, and they have images. And yeah, it's it, really it's good. It's really cool. It's really cool. Yep. 
So check it out. We'll have it linked below. Also, check out milehiremerch.com. Yeah, yeah, it is live, here. friends. Keep it fresh. Yep. I'm wearing the Keep it's going it Fresh quick. shirt. So if you want some, you better go get some. Yeah, if it it's... actually is going really quick. So <laughs> uh, yeah, by the time this episode goes out, there could be some sold out items. However, we are working on restocking, right, Sydney? We're going to yes, restock. We are working on that. Yep. Sydney is the merch queen in this <laughs> business. She's merch, merch ma'am. And yeah, so milehiremerch.com. Check that out. All of the shows have merch. Josh is actually wearing some lights out yep. merch right now. Very cool. Yep. And thanks for hanging out with us, guys. Yes. That was super fun. It was fun. It was yeah. a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Um, you can welcome me back anytime. I will welcome you back anytime. <laughs> you were great. Thanks for hanging out with me and Josh today. Janelle will be back soon. And until then, keep, keep it, it fresh. It fresh.